is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Often overlooked among the historic tracks is this one, Watkins Glen International Raceway. But overlooking this track is a mistake because this place has hosted the sport's all-time greats in its victory lanes. Sir Jackie Stewart, Rick Mears, Nikki Lauda. Today, getting to the winner's circle will mean mastering both the lefts and the rights and playing nice with the competition. It used to be so cut and dry. Short tracks were rock and roll. Road courses, they were classical music. Pretty to look at, nice to sleep too. No one's sleeping on road courses now. Welcome to the new short track. Where you can get punched with the left and right. I'm hoping that classical music can play all throughout the day. Welcome back to Watkins Glen. It's a Chamber of Commerce kind of day. Absolutely perfect. Perhaps the biggest surprise in qualifying besides the classical music goes to Kyle Larson, the driver who gets deservedly so much attention for his well-roundedness, will start 15th. The question is, does Larson simply have too much on his plate this weekend? We will explain. The points leader is just one spot behind, uh, excuse me, ahead in 14th. This is tied for Austin Dillon's best ever road course start in five races. He's the worst qualifier, though, among the top five in points, and the best qualifier among the top five in points, Sam Hornish Jr. This is becoming a thing for him at the Glen. In three starts here, he has started on pole twice. A quick hello from our home this afternoon. It's the Quicken Loans ESPN Pit Studio, and inside you will find us. I'm Nicole Briscoe, alongside Rusty Wallace and Brad Doherty. Ray Everham had to work two weeks in a row, so he has taken a week off. Sabbatical, sabbatical. It's, it's, Absolutely. He, he needs a break. Well He's, deserved, Ray. In, well indeed, deserved. but that's okay because it just gives us more time to talk that's about right. what we have here today. Let's not forget that this is just the second road course race of this season for these nationwide series, guys. And let's also not pretend that this is their comfort zone they will be on the road course one week from now at uh, mid ohio but a lot can happen here today and there is an awful lot at stake for these championship contenders there absolutely is and uh, you know i look at this as an opportunity race and in particular for two guys sam hornish and elliot sadler sam hornish got off to a great start this season las vegas dominated that race extremely fast has had some good runs but he's an excellent road racer starts on pole so i look for him to take advantage of this opportunity hopefully to gain some points maybe get a win Pass, surpass uh, Austin Dillon. Same for Elliott Sadler. When I look at both of these guys, Sam Hornish, Elliott Sadler, I think these two are the best road racers in this group. So can they take advantage of today and gain the crucial points that they need because we go road course racing again next week? And that's something that was overlooked. You saw that little note next to Sam Hornish Jr.'s name, how many points he has scored on the road courses in the last couple of years. You don't often think about that with Sam Hornish Jr. So opportunity for them, for Austin Dillon, Hold on tight. Yeah, right? ab absolutely, Nicole. He <laughs> needs to hold on tight. He needs to really watch what he's doing today because we really don't look at Austin Dillon as a great road racer, but Austin's got the right attitude coming in here. He knows he can't get off course. He knows he can't mess up. He knows he's leading the points and doesn't want to give them up. And one more thing he does know, it's Sam Hornish is red hot today, and he's going to be coming for him, so he's going to drive hard. Dillon has the right look, and he's got a good tutor right there, too. Max Pappas has been helping him a lot on the road courses. And you see right there, Max is in the race tomorrow, but he's talking to Austin Dillon right now because he wants his kid to run really good today and not mess up. I would like to point out what happened at the first road course event of the year. Regan Smith went into Road America with a 58-point lead. That race did not go as planned for Regan Smith. He left with a 30-point lead. Nine weeks later, he's now tied for second, 14 back of Dillon. And here we go again, Vince Welch with the rights and the lefts. Regan Smith is uh, definitely in the thick of this points championship. And Regan, as you come into this race today, how is your approach maybe affected by your point standing as compared to somebody who's not running for the championship? Uh, well, I don't think it's really affected. You know, we all have the same goals when we come out here to get the best finish that we can. And, and for us, I think that that best finish could be a win. We got a strong tax slayer Chevy and, uh, you know, certainly would mean a lot to me to, to get a win up here in New York. You're from this area, not too far away from here. I know you spent a lot of time here. What, what makes it fun about coming here to Watkins Glen for you, maybe when you came as a fan and now you come as a driver? Uh, you know, some of my earliest memories, Vince, of, of watching races were, were from here, actually sitting over in, I call it turn six, it's turn 10. 
Uh, but sitting over in the grandstands over there and then watching up towards the carousel and, and you know my heroes and the guys that I idolized I, I had a chance to sit here and watch that and that was uh, you know that was kind of the point where I started deciding hey man that'd be kind of cool to, to grow up and do that uh, you know did I ever dream that that would happen no but but certainly uh, that was where I kind of started having those dreams and uh, you know to, to come here have a strong run is always important to me uh, but but to get a win here would mean the world to me and then certainly a lot of friends a lot of family in this area and, and a lot of fans at this racetrack so it'd be a big day yeah very cool good luck today uh, thank you Regan Smith Nicole he rolls off fourth today indeed and here's something best road course qualifying effort ever for Regan Smith wow. when we come back there's an awful lot to talk about as we run through the field which by the way is stacked 40 drivers from cup drivers who are practicing for Sunday to the newest daddy in the garage and then there's also a driver who already has a win this weekend find out who and why that might be a distraction yeah we said that when we come back Welcome back to a beautiful Saturday at the racetrack as we get you ready for the Zippo 200 at the Glen. I don't know if you know this or not, but the racing here is pretty darn good. Sure. Hence what we are considering a record crowd here this weekend. But first, a little business to attend to. Tomorrow night on ESPN, it's interleague matchup. Evan Longoria and the race. Excuse me, I need to call. Sorry about that, had to cough. Evan Longoria in the race battle the NL West leading Dodgers at eight. Then Monday night at seven, Mike Trout and the Angels oh, in the Bronx. Man. A little team we know as the Yankees. Both games are on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. Yes, no, Back inside the Quick and Loans ESPN pit studio. Let's run through the field. Casey Kane got off to a really good start, obviously, last weekend in Pocono. He left that track in victory lane, then went to Atlanta this weekend, tested there. He's in the field today. Uh, perhaps surprisingly, uh, only starting 13th. Do we consider this practice for tomorrow? Oh, absolutely. Anytime these guys can get extra time on the road course, especially under actual conditions, it helps improve for tomorrow. This is a nothing but a great test opportunity for Casey Kane. We'll be trying to win that race tomorrow. One of four full-time cup drivers in the field. Yeah, I think we can consider that practice. Yes. There are two just in the Penske camp, by the way. It's a Penske three-headed monster this weekend. Joey Logano in the 48. And then last week's winner in Iowa is in the 22. He's also standing by with Dave Burns. By his yellow number 22 today, we were just talking about the number, the number yellow, number 22, the color yellow. Last year, Brad, after this race, you had finished second, and you said you were banking some nice guy points for the chase. So your chase situation going in this year is a little bit different, not quite as good. Do you hold anything back today? Well, you know, we'll see. I don't know. Depends on what kind of mood I'm in. I'm in a good mood right now, so I, I don't know. But, um, you know, we've had a really fast car. The Penske cars here at the Glen are extremely fast. So hopefully we can just get to the front and drive away. I know my teammate Sam Hornish and my other teammate Joey Logano today uh, are going to do everything they can to stop them. Of course, Kyle Busch is really fast here. I think uh, those four cars will be the cars uh, to look out for. So, you know, we just got to be smooth. We got to get to the front uh, and see how the race plays out. Uh, there's yellow cars going to be hard for the fans to spot, so just make sure you show it a lot. <laughs> I'm still getting used to it myself. So, uh, Joey's in the discount tire car, but I'm still in the 22, so just have to remember that. But uh, it should be a good day. Fancy cars qualified, one, three, five. It'll be a good show, Nicole. Not bad, and I like that. It depends on what kind of mood I'm in. I might have to use that <laughs> later. Brendan Gaughan starts 16th, but you say he's a driver to watch today. May I ask why? Yeah, Brendan's a pretty good road racer, believe it or not. A lot of people don't pay attention to him the way he drives road courses, but I have. He drove for me at Road America. He finished third. The guy's pretty good. Don't discount him because he's up for the game. He's in a Richard Childress car. He's looking pretty good out there. You should probably also keep an eye on Nelson PK Jr. So yes, I, I absolutely agree. He comes from extensive road racing background. A bit. Yeah, he's a Formula One, former Formula One driver. So I think he could be someone at the end of the day if he can make it through his pit stops, get to that last uh, chance, opportunity, last restart. He could win this race. It's also a big weekend for Justin Allgaier. He starts sixth, but the biggest part of his weekend already happened Thursday before heading to the track and I do believe we have a picture of this oh, Justin and his Harper wife Grace. Ashley welcomed baby girl Harper Grace into their family he introduced Harper to the world via the Twitter and while we aren't yet introducing any kiddos to the world uh, we can allow you to join our conversation in the pit studio at NAS or at ESPN NASCAR use the hashtag pit studio now Kyle Larson already has a win this weekend he ran a handful of laps here yesterday hopped on a plane flew to Knoxville got the win in Knoxville flew back here and by the way he's going back tonight only uh, qualified 15th yes kid loves a race there's no doubt about that that is a lot of 
A lot of air miles. Yeah. A lot of air miles. He, he's doing good. He's winning those things over there, and it doesn't seem to affect him here on the nationwide side. It's going to be tough for him, though. He's starting a little further back than I think he would like to have started. The kid's going to run 110 races this year, a lot of racing. He improves his position by about five positions from where he starts the last 10 races. So very, very capable young man. Hundred. Give him till halfway. That's what they say all the time about him. Last but not least, Travis Pastrana qualified 20th, and I want to go back to what he said after the race in Iowa last week. This NASCAR thing is beating me down. Yeah, but he can't get down too much. He's got to stay up. He's got to realize you got to wreck to understand this stuff. Well, he's done his fair share of wrecking. He doesn't want that to happen today. When we come back, we get this afternoon rolling. Plus, why turn one could spell trouble from the beginning to the end of this one. We shall explain next. End of the seventh turn, a nearly two and a half mile road course in the Finger Lakes region of New York. It's a bit of a wild card weekend, as turning both left and right is not something these drivers do often. In fact, it's the second road course of the season. The third and final comes your way next week. But if you look ahead too quickly, you will make a mistake. That's not something anyone in our top five can afford to do. So this afternoon, let's get it rolling in the right direction. Pre-race ceremonies are about to get underway, so I say we go trackside. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the following groups present our nation's colors. Civil Air Patrol from Binghamton, New York, Squadron Number 292, United States Air Force Auxiliary, the Corning American Legion Post 746, and the New York State Troopers. Please remain standing as Reverend David Fife of Bentley Creek Wesleyan Church offers today's invocation. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the spectacular weather that you've provided for this year's running of the Zippo 200. We ask your blessing upon the, today's activities with your hand of protection upon each driver, course worker, and crew member. Grant us a safe race, O oh God, and help us to remember that all good things come from you. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome curb sidewalk recording artist Tim Duggar. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire oh the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air Still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave for oh, the land of the free and the I have circles because I truly enjoy what this one gives us. Well, I can tell you one thing. We got great weather here today. The drivers are all jacked up, but I'm concerned who's going to make the first big mistake. I'll tell you what, I'm going to watch for a dark horse today, and that guy is going to be in the 77 car, Parker Clicker. Interesting. Dark. When we come back, turn one, why it will bite, and why when it does, it could hurt worse than it would on your standard oval. We'll explain when we come back. ESPN's coverage of the NASCAR...